Hello and welcome to Nobody's Eye. My name is Soham and thank you so much for joining in. In this video we are going to talk about One Piece chapter 1020 and let's just jump into it. But before that if you're new here then please consider subscribing to our channel since I do weekly anime and manga related content along with a bunch of other stuff. With that being said, let's make the video. Now, this chapter honestly was one of my favorite in a very long time because it focused upon two characters whom I feel are pretty much underrated in the Straw Hats crew, that being Nico Robin and Brook. Both of them are absolutely amazing characters and I was just so happy that we are finally getting some very good stuff from them. Now, the chapter initially begins with the confrontation between Kaido and Yamato. The fight continues and Yamato is currently in the hybrid form and we also get the reveal for her devil fruit which is not actually Kirin here at this moment but rather the Inu Inu no Mi, Oguchi no Makami or rather the Makami. Now, I have already made a separate video talking about this entire thing but this means and what is the mythological or the basic significance behind all of these things and why it ties back to Wano and the legend of Kozuki Odin so i would advise you to go and watch that particular video to have a better understanding of all of these things because in this particular video i just want to focus upon the stuff which happened in relation to Brook as well as Nico Robin and therefore i'm just going to skip over this part because i have mostly covered this in a separate video but for now the brief description here is that Kaido and Yamato are continuing their fight and we get the reveal for Yamato's devil fruit but moving forward we finally head back to the black maria fight and here things are getting very 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 interesting because black maria actually tries to capture nico robin by using her illusions here nico robin is actually shown the illusions of people whom she used to love a lot and people who are basically currently dead she sees the illusions of her mother she sees the illusions of professor clover and even she gets to see the illusions of jaguar d sol and jaguar d sol is even using his classic laughter here of der shishi der shishi now all of these things are obviously nothing more than an illusion it seems like oda had portrayed this chapter initially where nico robin seems like to be actually getting involved into this illusion she is going to see them she is going to greet them she is saying that i have always wanted to see you all as well and all of these illusions are calling forward to her that come here nico robin you have grown so big and we are so happy to see you uh, jaguar dis all also says that look how big you have grown robin and to this brook says that stop robin san please don't get any closer these are all illusions these are not the real people and robin says i know but still it is such a shame and then she uses a new attack this is called tresmano freshia and this attack sort of seems similar to her spank attack but it is a little different here because it's using three simultaneous hands at the very same time and after this the illusion of black maria is actually casted away and in the midst of all of that we get to see that these are actually three underlings of black maria who are being disguised as people whom nico robin used to love a lot once upon a time so yeah that's pretty good stuff and here we get to see the name of these characters as well the first illusion was by nure ona who is a hognose snake smile the second one was actually a number it's the numbers one of those giants which are kind of underutilized honestly i'm not really a huge fan of how the numbers are implemented if anything that's my one downside or one complaint with the wano arc overall especially how much they were foreshadowed and said to be a huge deal but once they eventually turned out they were not really having that big of an importance and this number this is actually a female number and she's called konyun and the last one is a uh, tenjiro kodari a rat snake smile i'm sorry if i just butchered the pronunciation for all of them but we also have some additional information here nure onna is actually literal translation for wet woman these are vampiric sea serpents who used to haunt shores and rivers and looking for human meat to consume so they are kind of very apt into this particular illusion sort of thing and they were initially encountered around the fukushima prefecture and secondly the tenjo kodari is generally associated with a sailing hanger it has the appearance of a naked ugly old woman with a long tongue and long untidy hair this is sort of a yokai which was documented and all of these things are sort of the illusions which are being applied here Now moving forward this interaction between Brook and Robin is simply amazing in my opinion it just goes on to show that how underrated this characters really are because they have had such a huge part such a huge uh what should i say back story which is not really developed that much sure we had the entire any slobby arc for Robin as well as thriller bug for Brook but even beyond that there's a lot more to these characters and that is aptly here on display in this particular chapter and i'm really really glad that oda is picking up upon all of these different things and black maria is totally 
uh, shocked at this particular thing. She's like, "Are you kidding me? How are you able to dispel my illusions?" And Brooke and Robin are starting to run, and Black Maria is chasing after them. This is a really good panel where Black Maria is just looking really angry and anxious and chasing after them, just like a dinosaur. It sort of reminds me of Jurassic Park in a way. And moving forward, we also get to see some of the other classic jokes of Brooke. But at the same time, Robin immediately goes on to ask Brooke that how are you not affected by this thing either? Sure, I was personally not affected by it because I have been running after from people and basically about her past. Uh, so she goes on to ask Brooke that how are you not affected by this particular illusion? And Brooke just. in a very gag manner he just said about his past we all know how sad brooks past really was he said that when i was adrift in that mist for 50 years of course i dreamt about my friends surviving it always hurt when i imagine about their faces so this is a call back to the entire thriller bark arc and how he was actually alone for such a long time and this is goes on to show the wholesomeness of the straw hat screw where these two broken characters finally got what they really wanted the family what they really desired and to this robin just in a very happy manner goes on to say that we are two peas in the same pod and to this brook just goes on to say that yeah but for that we have to overcome our current or real and while all of these conversations are taking place black maria is still chasing after both of them and she's using her typical weapon which is the one yudo and even brook says that this was such a strange weapon and i was really not expecting what oda has actually done here it turns out that this is actually a pug smile user it's a dog based a uh, smile which is really weird and apparently this is a human faced dog which keeps starting fires and that is why the entire region is almost lit up at this moment initially i was a little bit confused as to what exactly is this thing is this a dog which has eaten a smile which is similar to having a human face but then i realized after seeing this particular panel of the dog that no this is actually a grunt or a follower of black maria who has actually eaten a pug based smile and therefore his entire body has been reduced to that of a pug which is residing upon this one yudo wheel so yeah oda has literally shook us once again i was not expecting something like this so this is classic oda at its best but after this particular moment black maria is absolutely done playing around she uses her spider sticky web whatever and she just hangs over the ceiling and she's like so illusions don't sway you right but dreams do right because you are actually deluded enough to dream that you are going to win against kaido sama and therefore i am going to absolutely crush your dreams now something to note here it just is very random but obviously i have to talk about it black maria is obviously not wearing anything but there are just random bandages around her chest um i know that this is a manga they have to do something to omit the stuff you know what i'm talking about but this is quite random especially when we saw in the initial chapters in the beginning of the black maria versus robin fight where she just removed her top so maybe oda should have done something more creative rather than just randomly adding two pairs of bandages around her chest i don't know maybe the anime will add some more uh, scenes to exemplify this particular thing but it just feels kind of weird obviously this is going to introduce a lot more deviant art stuff but anyway after all of this black maria is using a one yudo and this has literally set the entire floor ablaze and because of this the entire building might actually collapse and to this black maria says that you are actually caring for the enemies that is actually very rich so why don't you just instead surrender to all of us nico robin why don't you do something like that and nico robin in the meantime uses a spider net to grab onto the ceiling and she's also holding on to brook at this particular moment but brook says that robinson can you hold on for me for a little bit longer because i have something which can deal with the weapon since the weapon is actually alive i am going to destroy it and with this claps everyone claps this is the brook this is mvp brook i love this character so much even more than robin i'm really sorry to admit this but even more than robin i absolutely love the character brook a lot of people were just you know uh, trash talking about brook but this is epic this is absolutely out of the park he becomes the soul and he leaps out of his body and he literally freezes the vanudo cold he literally freezes it using cold soul this is a new attack by brook and this is freaking amazing mvp brook once again claps everyone claps 
this is absolutely epic and i know that i'm repeating my words here i just yeah i'm 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 just too happy at this moment because this is literally mvp brook this is the very same thing as uh, whole cake island and now it's happening in vano once again you know what i won't even be surprised when the second round of the rooftop fight eventually happens when luffy faces off against kaido and maybe zoro is also into the mix I won't be surprised if Brook just jumps in from the background and with no hesitation he absolutely just cuts off something maybe cuts off the tail of Kaido or maybe just cuts off and freezes an arm of Kaido just like how he broke Mother Caramel's portrait in the midst of Whole Cake Island in the midst of all the chaos that ensued with Big Mom he's just maybe going to pull up a Hana or the Sanjo Yatsugiri or maybe a Cold Soul Cold Solid or Soul Parade or any move literally he has a lot of moves in his arsenal where he just blinks and he has just cut off the enemy moreover because black maria is spider based this entire ordeal really reminded me a lot of thriller bark once again because this is the entire same scenario with robin and brook into the mix and a spider based creature where brook had utilized his hanayota sanjo yatsugiri and just slashed away the spider i really wanted to see a hanayota sanjo yatsugiri once again that is literally one of my favorite moves done by brook here but alas that is not actually happening because black maria is going to face off against none other than robin after this particular point onwards because brook has now tamed the situation down he has frozen all the fire and robin can safely land upon the ground at this moment and he says that robin san you can deal with black maria because i am going to deal with all the other creatures who are currently trying to attack them and therefore we are eventually going to start our full Black Maria versus Robin fight I am really really looking forward to this particular thing. Now Brook also uses a new attack here Ice Burn which is really looking good. It's a addition of the Soul Parade in my opinion. I'm really sorry if I can't remember this is a new addition or maybe just a original part of Soul Parade but either way this looks really good and with this he has essentially frozen all the frames on the ground. Brook is really overpowered you know. Brook is really overpowered. and this is possibly one of the major reasons why he is mostly used for gags because he might be too overpowered in situations where it might be too easy for the straw hats but nonetheless black maria is still continuing her trash talks and she says that nico robin just give up you do know that your friends are always going to sell you out that happened in your past and that is going to happen once again you know black lex sanji literally called you out to me and that is the reason why you are currently here so why are you just being a burden to your crew big shots from all over the world are after you and they are just literally luring you here in this particular scene and black maria is literally trash talking about sanji here she says that all of onigashima I heard that laughing stock how he was yelling for your name he's the second highest bounty of your crew right that should tell something and she's basically insulting sanji at this particular moment but brook just goes on to say that sanji san is truly extraordinary isn't it robin san and after this we literally start both of our fights brook is gone on to handle all the subordinates and black maria is going to face off against robin at this particular moment and robin starts off by saying that Oh you will never truly understand just how much it means for him to rely upon me because he is one of the wings that will allow the pirate king to soar. Oh these words these are literally sweet drops drops of sweet drops of sugar which are pouring upon my heart. These lines are absolutely epic. I know that I'm reading the TCB versions of these scans and uh, the official translations might be a little bit different but i'm pretty sure that the word wings of the pirate king are absolutely going to be there and not only robin is referring to luffy as the future pirate king but rather the present pirate king literally she's just referring to him as the pirate king and also she goes on to say that sanji is one of the wings of the pirate king obviously the other one is zoro but I know maybe some Zoro fans or Sanji fans are going to start in fighting. I don't really care about all of these things. For me Zoro and Sanji are literally equal, not in terms of strength but in terms of character. They both are really important for Luffy and they both have proved their worth, so it's really not necessary to fight in this particular regard. And with this, Robin finally uses a new attack. Gigante Fleur and some people had actually predicted this honestly some people had actually predicted this this is literally Oda at his best two giant women two giant clothless women are absolutely going to fight at this moment because this is a new attack of Robin this is literally looking like the thousand arm buddha and here Robin has put up a huge image of her 
a huge copy of her with like numerous different arms and with this she just literally needs to smack the spider to the ground this is going to be the fight between two large women and hopefully in the next chapter we are going to get to see the conclusion to this or maybe in the chapter after that but either way the black maria versus robin fight is going to continue and we got a lot of different stuff with it in this particular chapter which i'm really really happy about now moving forward the last part of this chapter essentially deals with Luffy and Momo. Luffy is currently being kept at the Tokage port and he has been eating all the meat from the polar tank. The polar tank does not have any other meat but they are also successfully able to meet up with Shinobu and Momonosuke and Momonosuke says that it's a miracle that you have actually found him to be alive and Momo is really glad that Luffy is alive and right now Momo is absolutely breaking down that Kinemon and Kiku are almost dead. They literally died in front of me. And Luffy says that, no Momo, this is not the time for you to cry, you are still in charge, you can cry when all of this is over, you have to stay strong, we still have to blow away Kaido. Shinobu says that you are being too hard on Momo, but Luffy knows, Luffy knows how important it is to stay calm, stay strong, because he has been through ordeals like this, especially in Marineford. If you still say that Luffy has had no growth in his character, then I don't even know if you are actually reading One Piece or not. If this was pre time skip Luffy, he would have been actually very emotional about all of these things but he has been through a lot, he knows the importance and he knows how difficult all of these things are and that is why he's actually giving the very good advice to Momo and he says that we won't lose this time, we have to absolutely win this time but I just need more meat and yeah this is the typical uh, one piece gag, they need more meat, they need more milk and after this Luffy is going to be back to full strength and he's going to face off against Kaido for round number 2. Now I'm going to keep this part for a separate video because we get to see Caribou here but just looking on from the behind he says that Mugiwara needs to win this, what is the straw hat doing here, if he actually loses I will never be able to leave this country. Now I have some special theories about what exactly is Karibu doing here at this moment. He's appearing after a very long time and I have certain theories about it so I'm going to discuss that in a separate video. But the final page of this chapter is a reference to all the way back to Punk Hazard as well as to Tresrosa because Luffy says to Momo that you are going to take me up there to finish all of these things and in the vicinity we can actually see Onigashima flying into the sky. He says that Momo you need to transform into a dragon and you have to fly me up to there. The triumphant return of the king is about to happen. The king riding upon the dragon. My goodness, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be absolutely amazing. I love this chapter so much for so many different reasons. It's just amazing. It is simply amazing. The wait for a week was worth all of this and we literally got so many different things to work about. Next week, there's a chapter we thankfully have no more breaks. So I'm obviously looking forward to this as well. So that's it for today guys, thank you so much for joining in, please give this video a thumbs up if you like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more. Also please do mention your thoughts in the comment section below, I'd love to read them as well. In the meantime please join the channel membership for some very cool perks and features and join our discord server for some very exciting anime and manga related discussions. With that being said, this is Wonder and I'll see you all on the next one.